In a recent video, I talked about how many Japanese learners have the tendency to say all verbs in Japanese with accents. To be specific, I said that many learners say these verbs to carry, hakobu, and to play, asobu, like hakobu and asobu, which is wrong and sounds quite foreign. Again, these verbs are more or less flat, as in hakobu, asobu. Now, some people saw this video and asked a great question. They said, Okay, how do I know which verbs in Japanese have accents and which are flat? For example, if I learn the verbs to open or to take a shower using a textbook or an app, how do I know if these verbs have an accent or if they're flat? And if they do have an accent, how do I know where the accent occurs? Well, we could just try and rely on our ears and listen for these words in native speech, but this actually doesn't work very well unless we've already trained our ears to pick up on pitch accent. And what I mean by this is that despite the fact that most learners encounter, they learn these words very early on during their Japanese studies, again, to open and to shower, unless they've studied pitch accent, if they're just relying on their ears, they'll typically mispronounce them as akeru and abiru, which are both wrong. This verb, to close, does have an accent, and many people hear this and just kind of assume that its counterpart, to open, also has an accent, again, as in akeru, akeru, but this is incorrect. It's akeru, and then this verb, to shower, is also accentless, as in abiru. It's not abiru, but abiru, abiru. Akeru. 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 And I personally said both of these verbs to open and to shower, as well as many other everyday Japanese verbs, with these incorrect pitch accent patterns, with these accented pitch accent patterns, because it turns out that, again, it's not just as simple as repeat what you hear, because naturally, even if you do your best to repeat something, you're typically still unconsciously playing by the rules of your native language rather than the rules of Japanese. So if we can't trust our ears, at least not until we've trained them to pick up on pitch accent, then what do we do? Do we use a Japanese dictionary or some kind of application to look up the pitch accent pattern for every verb, for every word for that matter, in Japanese? Well, we could, but it's much more effective, it's much more practical to instead remember a handful of important rules that tell us the pitch accent patterns for multiple words or families of words. And one of these rules is the tz verb rule, and it's very useful. This rule says that all verbs that end with tz always have an accent, and that this accent always occurs on the second to last beat of the word. For example, utsu to hit, katsu to win, matsu to wait, motsu to hold, Tatsu to stand, tatsu to pass or to go by, as well as sodatsu to grow up, medatsu to stand out, tamotsu to preserve or maintain, hanatsu to emit or radiate, yakudatsu to be useful, etc., etc. All of these, all verbs in Japanese that end with t, they all have an accent, and this accent again always occurs on the second to last beat of the word. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's not that difficult. I would have said those verbs that way anyway, even if no one had ever explicitly taught me that rule. But it's very important to remember that that's probably because all of these verbs have accents. And that if you just sort of rely on untrained pronunciation instincts, there's a high probability you'll end up doing what I did and say unaccented verbs such as to open, akeru, and to shower, abiru, as we saw earlier, as well as other everyday Japanese verbs like arau, to wash, sawaru, to touch, tomeru, to stop, yameru, to quit, tsukau, to use, odoru, to dance, etc., etc., with the wrong pronunciation patterns. All of the aforementioned verbs, again, akeru to open, abiru to shower, arau to wash, tomeru to stop, yameru to quit, sawaru to touch, odoru to dance, tsukau to use, etc., etc. The list goes on and on. All of these are actually accentless. And when you say these with accents, when you unknowingly say these with accents, you're actually 
unknowingly making a fairly big pronunciation mistake. Now, don't get me wrong. People will understand what you're saying perfectly, but it's a bit like saying an English word with the accent on the wrong syllable. It's a bit like saying tomorrow rather than saying tomorrow. Again, people will understand what you're saying, but it doesn't sound natural. It sounds off. See, the thing about pitch accent is that, and this can be a very difficult pill to swallow. It certainly was for me. Once you start studying it, you realize that you can't, it, it can be a little bit dangerous to rely on untrained pronunciation instincts, to rely, to just simply trust your ears if you've never trained your ears and assume that you're able to perfectly reproduce whatever you're hearing. In other words, once you start studying pitch accent, you're likely to have the realization of, okay, I know that this pronunciation feels most natural to me, and I know that I've been using it for months or maybe even years, but is this in fact the correct pronunciation? And this of course is why a rule like the tz rule is super, super useful for people that do want to sound as natural as possible because it just takes out all the guesswork. We can say, okay, I know that I'm still training my ears. I, I'm still learning this, the basics of this pitch accent thing. But I also know that all these verbs, all the verbs in Japanese that end with tz are pronounced this way. And that because of that, I don't have to memorize them one by one. It's a big group of words. Okay, done, out of the way, memorized. That saves me time. And I can use that time to memorize the trickier verbs, the verbs that can't be memorized with a single rule. So again, if you're interested in sounding as natural as possible, then try and remember that all verbs in Japanese that end with tz do have an accent and that that accent occurs on the second to last beat of the verb. And if you'd like to learn more rules like this, there's actually one more rule that pairs really well with this one. It essentially doubles the efficacy, how effective this rule is. I've got, I explain a bunch of rules like this in my Patreon series linked down below, but then on top of these kind of rules, there's also some exercises and Anki decks that you can use to help train your ears to pick up on pitch accent in Japanese and kind of finally fix, get over those native instincts, those instincts that you have from your own native language. So if you think that might be useful for your particular Japanese learning goals, then there's a link in the description down below. Okay, I hope that this video was useful and I'll see you guys again soon. Mata ne!